Well, good morning. I am fully aware that I need to shoot more stuff in the front yard right now, and I will. But most of the time, I'm trying to capture this footage in the morning, sometimes in the fairly early morning, and I'm doing it before I'm presentable, so I don't want to just be out in my front yard um, not presentable. Let's put it that way. So if you don't mind, I want to just walk through the backyard. Look at that hanging basket. It's looking gorgeous right now. And I've got, I'm working on a, an exciting project that I hope comes to fruition that kind of has to do with some of the things that I use in my garden. And actually we photographed some of those items yesterday and I need to send off those pictures. But right now I thought it would be fun for me to give you a couple of tips from the potage that I, I, I have entitled Larkspur Lessons because they relate to Larkspur and I'm kind of writing an article on that right now. You can see I've just got stuff lying about, toppled over because yes, it did rain again last night. Things are gonna be so lush and overgrown and yes, buggy. So I'm trying to walk kind of slowly so you guys can, can see the garden en route. I know you've seen it a million times before. Hopefully you're not getting tired of it. Here are those wonderful plant stands that I showed you that I got at Home Depot the other day. There's a couple of them stacked together. I found them absolutely invaluable in the garden for a number of different reasons. One of them being that when I plant baskets, I set them on top of the baskets, or rather I set the baskets on top of the stand so that it doesn't ride out the bottom. And these I pulled out for to take some pictures. So let's go back here and I will share my larkspur lessons but here's another thing i want to point out the potage now really needs to be pruned it needs its second trimming but i'm certainly not going to do that when it's rainy because you don't ever want to prune when the foliage is wet because that can really invite disease and other problems that we certainly want to avoid I need to replant that section. I think I've showed you so. But this is this is the topic for today. I call it Larkspur Lessons. I am gonna show in my stories a picture of how this bed looked years ago when I first started gardening. And it relates a little bit to um, the post that I put on Instagram yesterday. And that's that when this bed was first introduced, I, I plant, had nothing in here but roses and poppies and larkspur, and it was absolutely gorgeous. But then one hard rain would fell everything, and there was no way of restoring it to its former drama once that happened. And I told you in that Instagram post, and if you're not following me there, follow me on Potage blog, that I wanted to have more year-round structure in here. Now, the, the lesson in all of this is we've had lots of hard rains here recently, but the evergreen structure that I introduced in the way of these arborvitas, and to a certain extent, even that vitex and the boxwood, and some of, well, actually even the potted plants and some of the garden ornament. Those things provide structure and stability. Just like there, there's a couple of more pots and a rose. And what I mean by stability is then that when things like this beautiful larkspur germinate, there are things surrounding them that support them, that their long stems can kind of get intertwined with so they don't topple over in high wind or rain. All of these larkspur, here's another larkspur lesson, go to seed 
or I plant more seed in the fall and then they just germinate and grow over the winter and then they come back. So you can see that there is not a solid block of poppies and Marksburg like there used to be in the back, but now there are tufts and hints of Larkspur that weave throughout the garden bed supported by, as I said, the infrastructure, the things that have more, they're just more formidable. They are more sturdy. And the Larkspur and the poppies, which all of the, the blooms have been knocked off. There's more getting ready to bloom. If I wanted to have dill in here, um, if I wanted to have bachelor buttons, anything like that that needs staking, then I guess as a practicality, the evergreens and the more formidable plants with structure serve as the staking, the natural staking. I can remember for a while when I just had tons of larkspur and poppies when they were first growing up, when they were young, I would put tomato cages around them and that, you know, that kind of helped support them, but it wasn't really very beautiful. This now looks far more integrated into the garden. It's far more enduring. It looks beautiful, even though we have had just nothing but rain and some hail these two tours you guys are from Gardener Supply. I always try to tell you where they're from as are, I think 50 people asked me last week about those wire cloches and also these supports on the perimeter. Those all came from Gardener Supply. So once other lanky things start to grow in here, whether it's Cosmos, or zinnias or other bloomers, they, they too will be supported by these sturdy stalwart plants. So that's Larkspur lesson number one, is to intermingle things like this that are tall and lanky with plants with sturdy construction. The second Larkspur lesson is, if you get, if you have a hue of Larkspur that you particularly adore, and I have some, it's not in bloom yet, but that it is a very deep purple, almost a double form, what I do is I tag that with one of those little round key tags that you can get at the hardware store. You could use them, you can mark them with anything, but basically to note that that is the seed that is especially prized. That's the Larkspur that is especially prized in the event that I want to harvest it, share it with friends, spread it around the garden. I know exactly which blossom turned into the seed heads that I so prize. So if I didn't do that, it would go to seed and then those seed heads would look like every other color and similar flower in the border. And I've got some pink Larkspur, I've got different shades of bluish purple, I've got some that's very intense. I've got some growing by the compost pile. Now that's obviously, it's a Larkspur lesson specifically, but it's a lesson that really applies to anything that goes to seed. If you find a, a blossom that you particularly like, its form, its hue, its shape, and you want to make sure to save that seed, then mark it before that flower turns into a seed head. I love these ambassador alliums from Color Blends because they still look beautiful even when they're no longer in that deep, rich, purpley pink color. They really look fun. Someone asked me if I leave them there with their dried heads in the garden. And I would, but I, I typically find that either because of high winds or rain or whatever, they will topple over and then the flower heads will rot. So I typically harvest them at a certain point and bring them in because I can use them for all sorts of different projects, which I won't go into now. You can see here, there's a poppy couple more buds getting ready to bloom. Look at those wonderful seed heads. But notice again that these are supported by all sorts of sturdier plants. The allium, 
the Vitex, the pots. And so you get this wonderful ethereal effect of plants that have gone to seed that come up and intertwine themselves amongst the other foliage. Now here's my third larkspur lesson. I said that you let the larkspur go to seed. It will drop its seeds in real time as soon as they dry. But then because I never know what the weather conditions are going to be in terms of heat and reliable rainfall, etc., I always save some seed and then I scatter them in the fall. And if you've never grown larkspur, that's what you wanna do, at least here in Oklahoma. You wanna scatter the seed of both larkspur and poppies in the fall, sometimes multiple times in the fall, so that they can hopefully germinate, put on growth, set a root structure so that then they're ready to bloom their heads off in the spring. So there you go. Those would be your larkspur lessons for today from me and the birds on this wet and cool morning. I hope you guys found this valuable. If you have specific things that you would like me to do videos on, please let me know. I'm trying to be responsive. I can't answer every comment that comes my way through Instagram and through YouTube. I'm trying to figure out a way to navigate all of that. But if you've got something you want to know, in particular, we're trying to save, um, our, save up our little inventory of our questions. There's my coffee cup. I'm going to grab it and go inside. Have a great day, you guys.